like to welcome <clears throat> each of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me if you would, to Galatians chapter 5. I want to read the first three verses of Galatians chapter 5 today that have to deal with standing fast in grace. It says there in Galatians 5 and in verse 1, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is debtor to do the whole law. As we move into this fifth chapter of Galatians today, we see that Paul begins the application of the doctrinal truths that he set forth in the first four chapters of this book. Galatians 5 makes it clear that the free grace of God is not a danger to the Christian life. There are some who foolishly, not only back then, but also today, say that if I believed in once saved, always saved, if, if I believed in this grace of God like you do, then I'd live any way that I please. No, no, friends. This chapter makes it clear that God's grace is not a danger to the Christian life. To turn back to the law for salvation results in falling from grace. The believer has the Holy Spirit of God within that is able to help him produce the fruit of the Spirit in his life. And this is how we have victory over the works of the flesh. It's not through our abilities. It's not through our own strength. It is through the Holy Spirit of God as we surrender to him and to his working in our life. And Paul's been giving them several arguments as you go through the first four chapters of Galatians, if I can put it that way, regarding this whole idea of salvation by grace apart from the law. And now Paul turns from argument to application. Paul turns from the doctrinal to the practical in the remainder of the book. And he reminds us that the Christian who is living by faith is not going to be a rebel. As a matter of fact, quite the opposite is true. He is going to experience the inner discipline of God in his life that is far better than the outward discipline of man-made laws, which do you think will enable me to live better as a child of God? That inner discipline of God in my life or the outward discipline of man-made rules that I try to follow on my own? Friends, contrary to what some would say, no person could become a rebel who depends on God's grace, who yields to God's spirit, who lives for others and seeks to glorify God with his life. On the contrary, the legalist is the one who eventually rebels because he's living his life in bondage. He is depending on the flesh, living for self and seeking the praise of men and not the glory of God. And eventually it leads to rebellion in his life. Here, Paul does everything in his power as the Holy Spirit of God dictated to him to point out that the person who is saved by grace is kept by grace. The person who is saved by faith is the one who lives by faith in dependence upon God. The message thus far that Paul is communicating in the first four chapters of Galatians is a message of salvation by grace sanctification by grace, victory by grace, and in the end, final salvation of the soul, the spirit, and the body by grace. So with that in mind, I want us to look at standing fast in grace in verses 1 through 3. We're going to learn here that grace leads to totally the opposite of what many people say. You see, in grace we have liberty, not bondage. Notice what he says in verse 1. Stand fast. I like that. He's just not, you know, the importance of, of, of uh, being around grace a little bit. But stand fast. Not just stand, but stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So, here he reminds us that we have been set free in Christ. And that we are to stand fast in that liberty, and not to be entangled by bondage in our lives. You see, to go back to the law was to go back into bondage as a slave. When the believers in Galatia trusted Christ, they lost the yoke of servitude to sin, and they put on the yoke of Christ. And the yoke of Christ frees us to fulfill his will, while the yoke of the law enslaves us. Friends, the Holy Spirit of God leads the believer into paths of right living, 
Uh, you can see that in Psalm chapter 23, and I take you so, to encourage you to take some time to read that, where we see that he leads us beside the still waters, and you can see how he leads us as a people of God, and what a blessing it is to be free in Christ, free to be led by the Holy Spirit of God in the paths that he would have for us, and that is true liberty, that is true freedom as a child of God. It's not for me to live my life as I please. It's not for me to put myself back under the bondage of the law. It's freedom to surrender to God and to his working and allow him to do what he desires to do in our lives. In Romans chapter 8 and in verse 14, it tells us very clearly, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So the Bible says one of the sure indications that somebody is truly born again that they are a child of God, is that they are led by the Holy Spirit of God in their life. Friends, God never gave any person a permit to sin. And the preaching of pure grace does not give believers a license to sin, as we see very clearly here in the book of Galatians, especially in chapter 5. The true born-again child of God does not crave the beggarly elements of the world. We are free indeed as a people of God, and we should rejoice in that freedom. But that freedom is not freedom to sin, but a freedom to serve the Lord from the heart. And we do that out of love, not because of fear or commandments or compulsion. Yes, we know his commandments and we desire to do them, but the reason, and we do fear the Lord, uh, the fear of the Lord is a healthy thing and we need that, but the underlying reason behind why we do what we do is because we love him and we desire to live lives that are honoring and pleasing to him. So Paul says here, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. What does Paul mean when he says, be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage? He's saying very clearly that to go back to the law or to go back to circumcision was profitless. The legalizers and these Judaizers, the teachers who came along behind Paul insisted that the Gentiles must become Jews and submit to the right of circumcision according to the law of Moses in order to be saved. They said, yes, you need faith in Christ to be saved, but you also need to be circumcised. And friends, Paul tells them here in verse 2 that to go back to circumcision or to go back to any law keeping for salvation makes a person a debtor to the whole law. If we're going to abide by the law and try to keep the law in order to be saved or stay saved, you just can't pick what part of the law that you're going to live by. You need to abide by it all. And Paul says, behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Remember what it says in James 2.10, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, but yet offending one point, he is guilty of all. So Paul here is opposing the teaching and preaching of the Judaizers, and Paul declares boldly, If you Galatians submit the circumcision after the law of Moses, you become debtor to do the whole law, and you are under the curse and the condemnation of the law if you do not keep that law perfectly. This is what Paul is saying in verse 3 when he says, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Friends, if that's the way you're going to go, Christ then can profit you nothing. If you turn to circumcision as a part of salvation, then you are under the law and you are debtor to the whole law. If you want to turn to any part of the law for keeping the law as part of your salvation, then the truth of the matter is you are under the whole law and you are a debtor to the whole law. And friends, you cannot keep part of the law and then ignore the other part without being a law breaker. It must be all of grace or it is not of grace at all. You cannot mix grace and works. You cannot mix grace and the law. If you look to the law for justification, you totally miss the grace of God and the liberty that it brings. And that's what Paul is telling these Galatian believers here in these verses. Friends, let me ask you today, are you uh, looking to Christ by faith alone or are you also looking to the law for justification, looking to what you can do for justification? Friends, if you do that, you are totally missing the grace of God and the liberty that it brings. I encourage you to turn from those things, to trust Jesus Christ and him alone to save you, surrender to him, and then he will make the changes that need to be made in your life.
as you surrender yourself to him. Have a great day.